Hi, uh, can you guys uh, see my screen now? Yeah, uh, we can see your screen. Uh, so shall we start or we'll wait for... Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, can you please jump uh, to the agenda slide, Karan? Yeah. All right. Uh, sure. So, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, before we uh, proceed, I just wanted to introduce our speaker. Uh, we have uh, Param Veer Singh with us. Uh, he's our uh, AVP trackwise validation. And uh, he has closely worked with Sparta system and helped them to automate their complete validation package for uh, TrackWise and TrackWise Digital. Uh, about the second speaker, you know, we uh, were supposed to have Pankaj Goyal here, who is our chief product officer. Unfortunately, due to some unavoidable reason, he is not able to join us today. However, uh, Param uh, will be leading the session. So, uh, Param, uh, so let's start with the agenda for the webinar. Uh, could you please give us a quick brief uh, uh, that what we are going to cover in the agenda. So firstly, if you could give us a quick brief and uh, accordingly you can proceed. Sure, uh, thanks Sumit uh, and hello everyone. Uh, I'm hoping to have a good session today. So in uh, today's uh, uh, webinar, we'll be uh, covering uh, how user uh, will be able to use existing uh, uh, configuration uh, pre-built uh, configuration within Opkey to create their uh, OQs and uh, PQ validation uh, for trackwise. Uh, here uh, we'll be taking um, multiple scenarios uh, uh, to uh, elaborate uh, the complete demonstration session. Uh, we will be showing uh, how easy it is for a user to create their uh, OQs, how we can uh, provide the uh, test data to those uh, OQs. Uh, so we'll be covering this uh, in our demonstration session and uh, suppose that uh, we'll be taking uh, question and answer uh, if anyone can. So uh, to start with the uh, trackwise uh, automated validation, so what exactly is the need for uh, you know uh, automated validation? So let's understand uh, what is the main challenge uh, uh, we are having with the uh, manual validation uh, nowadays. So the, uh, with every release, uh, everyone has to put uh, lots of effort in doing the complete uh, manual testing, uh, uh, you know, on uh, different uh, uh, trackwise instances. We have to manage uh, multiple, uh, you know, uh, uh, set of documents. So, which again is a very quite tedious, uh, you know, uh, documentation process. We have to sign it, print it, keep it uh, in the archival for audit purpose. And on of that, uh, we'll be having uh, frequent uh, trackwise uh, configuration updates uh, with every release. So ultimately, you know, that leads to uh, the overall uh, manual validation uh, very cumbersome. Uh, and if uh, nowadays the uh, teams are moving more towards uh, the agile methodology, so with the every uh, every sprint, uh, we have to do some sort of uh, you know. Uh, uh, manual uh, testing effort we have to put in every sprint. So how uh, automation uh, will be helping is uh, you know, uh, user need some kind of a solution to uh, you know uh, provide any flexibility uh, for uh, end user uh, to make uh, the overall uh, automation test script uh, creation as faster as uh, you know. Uh, uh, we, uh, it should be aligned with uh, our development rate and also uh, the ease of uh, designing the automation test scripts and as I mentioned like we are working in the agile uh, methodology so uh, we need this uh, as often as uh, you know with every uh, sprint and uh, frequent uh, releases of uh, internal uh, track wise. So here uh, we have uh, one poll and I would uh, request uh, Sumit to just uh, open the poll for the users. Uh, Sumit? Sure. Uh, but I'm just launching the poll. So I'm sure, uh, you know, participants will be able to see poll in their screen. Uh, I request all the participants, could you please take the 
participate in this poll so that you know we can announce the result accordingly. So the question is, what is the frequency of uh, trackwise releases? Once in a year, twice in a year, four times in a year, more than four times in a year. All right, so uh, I think that it's time to announce the result. So uh, we have uh, some interesting fact actually. Uh, the option ones, a once in a year, it's 25%. Option two, twice in a year, it's 40%. Four times in a year, 30% and option D is 5% on. So, uh, uh, Param, uh, can you please uh, put your screen on the poll uh, slide? I'm just launching another poll uh, question. Thank you. So here we have another poll. How much time do you spend on trackwise validation in every release? Okay, so it's time to announce the result. Option A, two weeks, 10% participants vote for this, uh, voted for this, and uh, option B, 34% for uh, four weeks. Uh, option C, six weeks for 46%, which has the highest uh, number of uh, voting. And option D, more than eight weeks, it's, it has only 10%. It's a close time between uh, option A and uh, D. So, uh, Param, uh, yeah, sure, but we can continue with the session. Uh, thanks, Sumit. So moving ahead, uh, you know, understanding uh, we have uh, frequent uh, releases uh, of trackwise uh, internally or, you know, uh, based on uh, uh, actual uh, trackwise uh, product release, uh, we'll be spending more effort on the manual testing. So here, uh, let's take a uh, you know, business case uh, for one of the customer uh, we recently uh, did. Uh, the automation, uh, complete automation uh, validation package. Uh, so this customer will be having around uh, 96 uh, EQs and uh, along with that uh, there will be around uh, 64 uh, regression cases. So uh, the overall uh, effort with every release uh, this uh, you know, team is putting is uh, approx uh, 770 hours of uh, manual effort, manual testing effort uh, in every release. And on top of that, uh, with every internal, uh, you know, sprint, uh, they'll be uh, spending this, uh, you know, in uh, cumulative uh, efforts. So uh, we did uh, the complete uh, automation for uh, this customer, uh, including uh, 96 PQs, uh, 64 regression cases. And uh, in the last release, uh, we had, uh, we were able to trim the overall manual effort uh, down to uh, approximately uh, 80 hours. So this includes uh, the complete uh, EQ uh, uh, validation package done for uh, two different uh, trackwise instances. So a uh, quick overview of uh, uh, our product, Opki. Uh, so Opki uh, is a test automation platform uh, supporting multiple uh, uh, technologies, uh, including web, desktop, mobile. You can uh, perform, uh, you know, uh, 
test script building using uh, inbuilt test script uh, builder on uh, multiple platforms. So we have uh, out of the box uh, support for uh, TrackWise uh, as we are uh, uh, technology partner for uh, Sparta systems. Uh, for TrackWise and TrackWise Digital, we'll be having the pre-built uh, components uh, for uh, different versions of TrackWise. And uh, again, on the TrackWise Digital side, uh, we have uh, different com uh, you know pre-built components for different apps, including platform complaint, uh, IFT. We are also uh, having a solution which is more AI driven now for different uh, enterprise uh, level application including uh, Salesforce, uh, Oracle, uh, EBS, Valde, Now, and uh, TrackWise. Uh, we have uh, Fortune 500 uh, customers uh, in our bucket list. Uh, we are recognized by Gartner. So let's see how Opki uh, and TrackWise integration uh, you know, uh, happens right now. So, as I mentioned, uh, we are a certified uh, technology uh, partner for Sparta. We have uh, uh, the complete. Uh, we have done the complete uh, automated validation uh, package for uh, Sparta system. Uh, we have a solution around uh, OQP EQ uh, validation accelerator, which will be you know covering in uh, our today's uh, demonstration. Uh, in the last webinar, we have covered automated uh, configuration validation. Another solution we have is around uh, user uh, security validation. For uh, OQs, EQs uh, validation accelerator, we'll be having uh, 350 plus uh, pre-built components uh, using which user can create their automation scripts. Uh, for automated configuration validation, we'll be covering all the different sections in the web admin. Uh, we have 100 plus uh, pre-built uh, OQs for that. Uh, and we have uh, compatibility for uh, TrackWise uh, version 8.7.x till 9.x. Uh, uh, so right now we are helping Sparta in uh, 9.3 validation. So uh, we are having the industry's uh, first uh, out of the box uh, AI powered uh, test accelerator for TrackWise. Uh, we are uh, GXP uh, compliant. Uh, so with every uh, Opti release, uh, we'll be having the complete uh, Opti validation uh, uh, pack. Uh, using existing uh, automated solution uh, for different enterprise application, including TrackWise, uh, we uh, have uh, seen around 70% uh, optimization in with every uh, you know uh, every release. So uh, let's now uh, jump on to uh, the demonstration part. Uh, we are first of all we'll be covering how in TrackWise uh, we can create uh, OQs or EQs uh, test strip designing, and we'll see how easy it is uh, for end user to create uh, the uh, you know, uh, OQPQ validation package in Opti using pre-built components. So uh, to understand this. Uh, will be uh, showcasing how a user can reuse the pre-built components uh, in Opti uh, to create uh, business uh, processes and then uh, each business process can be used to create uh, test cases with uh, multiple uh, test data sets. So uh, users just have to create the test case, uh, provide the test data and uh, user can just simply run the test script to generate the execution report. So let's uh, you know, see how user can uh, achieve this. So right now uh, I'm opening the uh, Opkey Accelerator UI. So on the UI side, uh, right now I'm on the dashboard screen. Uh, where uh, you will be able to see uh, multiple tabs on top. Uh, the very first tab is uh, the test case section uh, where user will uh, be able to create the test cases. So uh, once I click on that, so it lands me to the uh, test case uh, management uh, screen. Another uh, tab is for business processes where uh, user can uh, use uh, inbuilt business components to create the business processes. And then the business components are uh, pre-built components which we have for uh, our uh, different track-wise versions, uh, including 8.7, 9.0, 10.0, 11.0, 12.0, 13.0, 14.0, 15.0, 16.0, 17.0, 18.0, 19.0, 20.0, 21.0, 22.0, 23.0, 24.0,
uh, 9.1. Right now we are uh, working uh, on 9.3. Uh, another tab we have is for uh, the job section uh, where user can uh, create the uh, job uh, using existing test cases and they can uh, schedule it, they can trigger it. Uh, next section we have is uh, for the execution results. So once the execution is completed, either from the job or test cases, so user will be navigated to the execution uh, result section where they can uh, you know, monitor uh, the past execution, execution uh, results uh, and uh, review it. Here on the dashboard, we have uh, multiple uh, charts uh, showing the last uh, executed uh, job status, how many pass, percentage pass, fail, input fail. Then we have uh, currently executing build. So user will get the real-time execution uh, uh, you know, uh, reports uh, right from the dashboard. And this is purely for uh, meant for, be, uh, for the business team. Uh, then uh, we have uh, artifact uh, sharing how many uh, business uh, processes are being shared across uh, multiple test cases. And this is the execution uh, session. How many sessions have been executed, how many paths, how many fails. So user will get the you know, complete health of the uh, build uh, from the dashboard section. Now uh, let's uh, see what do we mean by pre-built uh, components uh, and how user will be able to see that and uh, use it. So right now, uh, in this hierarchy, uh, you will be able to see uh, multiple pre-built components uh, for uh, TrackWise uh, 8.7 and 9.3. Suppose if a user wanted to create, uh, you know, search for any pre-built component, uh, which is the uh, login component, so user can just simply search in that and see, uh, do I have any existing pre-built component here? So once we start typing the text here, so it will search uh, for the business component for me. So here uh, we can see it search uh, for the uh, TA login, trackwise login that means. And uh, these uh, pre-built uh, components, uh, you know, uh, will be clubbed together uh, in the business process to create uh, the test uh, case. So uh, right now I'm uh, moving to the business uh, process section and here the uh, user can create their own business process. So uh, once I click on the uh, create business process, we just have to provide the name. Right now uh, I'm just uh, creating a business process for the activity. So we'll be creating uh, one business process for uh, multiple user roles uh, activity validation uh, where uh, we'll be creating a record, assigning it to uh, different users and then I will you know, progress the workflow state and validate whether the uh, you know, right user has uh, the permissions to uh, perform the right activity. Right now on the right hand side uh, you'll see a complete uh, tree structure uh, which is uh, organized based on uh, the trackwise version. Right now uh, here uh, if I expand it, <coughs> trackwise 8.7. So uh, in the function library section uh, we can see if we drill down so here uh, we'll get uh, function libraries uh, or pre-built components. So function library is nothing but a pre-built component uh, uh, in uh, of the accelerator. So once we expand it, so we have all the different uh, pre-built components available for web admin for each and every section, uh, which includes system configuration. In so system configuration, we have pre-built components for you know uh, modules specific to data field. So you can uh, expand it. User can uh, create a data field, update the data field, uh, just based on you know what data they wanted to provide. On the track by side, uh, if user wanted to create uh, their Office PQ, so what they need is the uh, you know, they need to log in into track by first. Then suppose uh, they wanted to uh, set the scope.
and here uh, we have uh, you know uh, the uh, you know understand the multiple scenarios and uh, created some pre-built components to create the scope, edit scope, update scope. <clears throat> so uh, user can just uh, click on the uh, plus button to add these uh, pre-built components uh, in this window. And uh, suppose right now if user want to uh, create a PR, they can uh, go to the helper library. And user can uh, select PR creation. And uh, we want you to save this record. So uh, it depends like what exactly your scenario is. Uh, so you will get uh, pre-built uh, components to you know, uh, work with uh, uh, any, any specific screen or section uh, on the track wise side or uh, web admin side. And right now if uh, you have any specific scenario, uh, so uh, you know, uh, those specific uh, pre-built components can be created uh, within the uh, Opki uh, accelerator package. And if I wanted to handle, uh, say, electronic signature stream, so we have the pre-built component for that also. Uh, user can, you know, uh, click on handle meaning and uh, electronic uh, signature window. So user just have to click on the plus button to uh, create, uh, you know, to add this business component to work with the uh, electronic and uh, uh, meaning screen. If user wanted to uh, go ahead and uh, do some uh, verification, uh, so here uh, we have some uh, verification uh, uh, function libraries also. So uh, we have the uh, you know pre-built component to fill the uh, post activity. So it depends like what action you wanted to perform uh, on the PR screen. So uh, once user you know add uh, required pre-built components. Uh, uh, in the business process section, so the next thing uh, comes is you know providing the test data uh, to this uh, uh, business process or test case. So uh, that part uh, user can do uh, from the test case section. So user can uh, use the same uh, business process which we just created with the name multiple user roles. So now in the test case section, user can map the test data with this uh, business uh, process. So here I will give a name to this test case. Once we create it, so uh, from this screen, uh, we'll get the option to provide the uh, input data. And here uh, we can see like each business uh, component uh, have its own uh, set of uh, input uh, argument. So uh, user can either provide the static data which uh, we generally don't uh, recommend in the test case. So here uh, we are provide, want to provide the data from local data repository. So here we have two tabs on top. Uh, once user wanted to uh, create or uh, provide the test data, they can uh, create a uh, data repository by clicking on this plus button. So uh, here uh, they will get a link like this. So once user click on the open local data repository, which is a kind of a spreadsheet, in this uh, local data repository, user will uh, get the complete uh, you know, uh, template for this particular uh, test case, which is uh, to create uh, you know, a record in, uh, in TrackWise. So here it is asking to provide the URL uh, for TrackWise instance. User can provide the username, password, language. So it will automatically create this template. User just have to you know fill in this uh, data. And if a user uh, you know already provided this data once, so uh, they can uh, save it uh, in Opki for the you know uh, further execution. So they can uh, reuse that test data also. So uh, Opti will uh, provide the complete information like uh, what data uh, you know, uh, we need to uh, put in in a specific column. So user will understand these column names and uh, you know just start uh, providing the uh, value in this.
once this value is provided, user can now save this uh, particular test case, and uh, this test case is uh, ready for uh, execution. So now, uh, right now, this is uh, quite a simple test case. User can uh, you know create as complex as uh, their scenario is. And here uh, we have uh, the maker checker. Uh, once we are in the designing phase, so we'll provide this uh, you know. Uh, test case as the draft state once this is done so you can uh, publish this uh, test cases so that means uh, now this test case is done and uh, we are we don't uh, want to change anything in this test case so from the audit perspective uh, user will get the complete published state for here right now uh, let's see you know how user can uh, execute this uh, test case So uh, for that, uh, I'm just opening uh, one existing activity permission uh, workflow OQ, which we created recently. So here also you will find the complete set of uh, business components aligned in this uh, left hand side uh, chart. So this is the complete state uh, transition diagram. So user can just pull in the right business component to create this uh, you know, uh, uh, chart uh, in very intuitive format. So here uh, we are logging to TrackWise, selecting the scope. We will be creating a PR. Then we'll open the same record which we created uh, with this business component. And then we'll uh, start performing the activity. We'll uh, fill in the activity summary, uh, click on save and uh, exit. Then we'll handle the electronic signature. We'll log out from uh, TrackWise. Then we'll log in back with the different uh, user permissions and uh, perform the workflow. So all these uh, previous components are readily available. Users just have to drag it uh, and uh, you know create their uh, uh, OQ or uh, PQ. So let's see uh, how user can uh, execute this. So uh, one way is, you know, user can uh, create, uh, run this single test case right from the test uh, case wizard. So user just have to provide some uh, required information here. And this is the uh, execution agent on this machine. User just have to, uh, it will automatically populate the session name, build name. So build name is uh, the folder where this execution result will be saved. We are running this with using the Selenium JS as the plugin, which is extended uh, version of uh, Selenium Web Driver. And here uh, we are taking the screenshot for all the steps. You can uh, set the screenshot quality. Uh, here we can set up the step timeout, and we can also set uh, set up uh, you know the mailing report uh, after execution if we wanted to send the execution report to different uh, you know uh, team members. So once we click on the next button, here uh, we'll click on finish. So right now, uh, the execution in Opki started, and on the extreme left, left uh, we'll be able to see the complete status of what are the business component being called in this uh, test case. And here in the middle section, uh, once this execution will be uh, started, so user will get the detailed uh, execution uh, report. Uh, you know, which, uh, which uh, business component is passing, and uh, within business business component, or whatever keyword we have used. So it will uh, show the state of that also. So right now Opki is preparing for this execution and Opki just launched uh, browser. So whatever uh, data user have uh, provided as part of uh, the local data repository, so Opki is uh, using that data and uh, you know, uh, just 
still in uh, in the trackwise application right now op used uh, admin privileges uh, to log in into a uh, trackwise instance So here uh, OK clicked on the new PR button and OK will uh, select the right uh, division and project based on whatever data uh, is being uh, provided uh, from the data repository. And in some cases like if uh, users just want you know to fill in any data in the field so we have the provision to uh, you know enter some uh, random uh, or dummy data also. But in case if user wanted to enter some uh, valid data so they can just uh, provide the data from the data repository. Right now uh, one record is created uh, 2130 and Opti is uh, doing the validation whether the record which is created is in uh, state open. So it will uh, open the same record right now. And it has the provision to search for the record, open the record, you know, do some validation on that record. So right now it is ensuring whether the right uh, value is uh, mentioned on the desktop layout table values like show description, state, and the user. Right now, uh, it searched for the same record ID, uh, 2130, and Oki uh, clicked on the same record, which uh, just created by Oki. And here, uh, it changed the activity type to initiate work, and also doing the validation at the same time, whether the work, uh, you know state of this uh, record is uh, changed to work in progress or not. So it just enters the activity summary and once it uh, try to save it, so here uh, comes the electronic signature window. So what we did is we just, you know, drag the uh, business component to handle the electronic signature, right? And uh, OP is doing the rest of the work. User just have to, you know, pull the right uh, business component and uh, OP automatically sends like uh, what is the user credentials which are being used to log in into trackwise and it use the same user credentials so user doesn't have to you know uh, provide uh, user credentials every time during uh, electronic signature so it will automatically pick those uh, credentials uh, from the inbuilt uh, variables and right now uh, Opti logs in uh, with a different user as a reviewer so this reviewer has uh, some specific uh, permissions uh, to perform uh, activity on the record which is created by admin and the record which we created is uh, 2130. Opti will automatically, you know, store this uh, uh, record ID in the session variable. And uh, it just opened the same record 2130. So it will try to uh, perform the activity which this user uh, doesn't have uh, permission to. So right now, uh, the reviewer is trying to perform the activity type as a close cancel. So this is the kind of uh, negative testing uh, we are doing here. So we are uh, you know, trying to uh, perform the activity uh, from using this user, which uh, this user is not intended to. So once after providing the electronic signature, right now uh, the same uh, you know uh, credentials being used, uh, which are being used uh, as the login into Trackwise using reviewer credentials. So uh, now comes the verification part. So Opki search for the same record and now trying to validate whether the record state changed to uh, close cancel uh, just because you know we performed the activity. So uh, we can do this verification from multiple uh, ways, right? So, so this is one of the way like search for the record and uh, see the state is uh, you know, uh, clo uh, changed to close cancel or not. Or otherwise, the user can also validate it uh, from uh, the peer screen also. <clears throat> and uh, 
and now uh, we'll perform the activity which this user has access to so we perform the activity type as a work completed and now this uh, record state should change to uh, pending approval again uh, off is uh, entering the electronic signature Again, uh, OPKI will uh, search for the record and uh, we'll see whether the state is uh, changed to pending approval or not. And this uh, verification can be extended to you know each field value also. It all depends what exactly uh, the user scenario is and what how extensive uh, validation we wanted to do. And user can also you know validate the same data which uh, we have entered uh, during this record creation on the reports uh, you, so we can do the uh, you know uh, val uh, report validation also the crystal report validation so the same data which we entered on the records uh, while creating the record can be validated on the crystal report so right now the verification pro process is uh, going on on the desktop uh, screen Right now, uh, we use uh, you know, the business uh, component to create uh, a record uh, to perform the uh, activities on that record. So, a uh, user can extend uh, the same test case uh, to perform uh, other activities like uh, you know, uh, querying something and doing the validation or scheduling. Uh, records or you know, uh, this could be uh, extended up to like creating a config form doing the uh, validation whether the right field is there on the config form or not after uh, you know once we uh, select a config form for a project so this uh, validation can be done so right now uh, Opki log out from uh, uh, user as a reviewer and logged in uh, with the approver user uh, it will automatically search for the same record It will uh, open the record. Again, it will do some connected uh, testing here. So it again, try to perform the activity type, which is a close cancel, which this user doesn't have a permission to. Again, using the same electronic signature, which uh, uh, electronic signature credentials, which uh, is used to uh, you know uh, during the uh, login time into TrackBase. Again, uh, the verification uh, process is happening on the desktop layout screen. It is validating uh, whether the state changed to uh, you know uh, something else from pending approval. And in some cases, like if uh, your data is being migrated between the multiple uh, applications. Uh, uh, you know trackwise to say salesforce or salesforce to trackwise or trackwise to stratus stratus to trackwise so Oki can you know wait for uh, uh, some event to happen right and this event could be your state change for a record right so uh, we can now provide the timeout Oki can wait uh, uh, up to the timeout so this wait can be customized if user wanted to you know, wait for the uh, record state to be changed uh, for say, uh, you know, say 15 minutes. So, uh, Opki has the flexibility to, uh, you know, uh, 
wait and uh, keep on uh, refreshing the screen for this record and uh, you know see if uh, the state uh, change to uh, uh, say XYZ or not right and uh, if the state still doesn't change so it will refresh the desktop layout screen again and again uh, you know do the validation so it will wait until uh, the provided uh, timeout in the test data repository So again, uh, now uh, Oki did this uh, validation for user as approval and uh, as I mentioned there are few uh, negative validation we did. So ideally this uh, script should fail because uh, here we did the validation whether the uh, reviewer user has the permission to perform a close cancel activity which it uh, does not. So the script will fail at that particular step. By any chance, if uh, there is a change in the configuration, uh, trackwise configuration, and by mistake, if a uh, user gets some, uh, you know, uh, privileges change, and they got access to some other uh, permission, uh, some other act, uh, state or activity uh, permission, so Opti will, you know, do that validation and uh, generate the report. So it will be quite easy uh, for user to just trigger the execution uh, in nightly mode or unattended mode and uh, they can you know just leave for the day, Opti will do the validation and user will get the results uh, on the email. So we can configure that. So right now here uh, we can see uh, two steps are failed which were expected failures. And let's see how these uh, results will look like right in Opti. So Opti logged in with the trackwise and if I scroll all the way down, so here we are doing the validation state testing. We have the keyword valid, uh, verified text in table cell and here uh, we are validating whether the uh, state change uh, to pending approval and here uh, we have the screenshot on the extreme right side in the captured screenshot section. So once user click on that, so here we can see what is the state uh, of the record during the execution time and this record is same, uh, same 2130 which is captured uh, in the screenshot and the sta uh, state is still work in progress. So this verification got failed and we got the message. The value which is required was not found on the currently active page and due to that uh, this verification is failed and in the debug information we got the message actual found work in progress which was the state of that record uh, during the execution time and this is the expected state this should be uh, there on the screen that means user can simply you know uh, drill this uh, execution down and see what what step exactly got failed and they can uh, you know go through this uh, uh, information, go through the screenshot, go through message, debug information and uh, get the idea like what exactly is the reason for this failure and they can you know take a decision whether this is a change in requirement or this is change in you know uh, some configuration by mistake right. So uh, this is the report uh, which is uh, generated by Opti uh, and user can export this report uh, in the PDF or HTML file and uh, we generate multiple type of report. So right now uh, in Opti user can uh, create summary report, detail report, integrated data report and if a user has some specific requirement so uh, we can you know customize this report uh, based, based on uh, the user requirement. So for uh, Sparta we have uh, created a specific record uh, report which uh, includes uh, the detailed uh, scenario uh, description along with the input output uh, test data uh, along with the screenshots embedded in the same uh, PDF report and uh, for an instance if I just want to show you the report which we are generating uh, for SPADA so this report has uh, the detailed information uh, when did this execution started or what how much time it took uh, 
uh, what is the you know uh, state of each uh, scenario uh, and uh, associated uh, uh, screenshot uh, with that uh, stack and these screenshots can be captured at a specific uh, state so user can also configure that if user want to take the screenshot for each step so they can do it if user wanted to take the screenshot just for uh, one complete page so that can also be done so here uh, this is the complete list of uh, screenshots being captured by Opti and as I mentioned uh, this report can be customized so let's uh, quickly go over uh, another scenario uh, just to see like how easy it is uh, to update any existing uh, tested in uh, trackwise so uh, we can take a use case uh, where we have uh, uh, the five different uh, fields on the screen and the user wanted to add uh, say one more field user added one more field from the config form and they wanted to update the execution uh, uh, update the test script so how a uh, user can do it so for that here uh, i just wanted to show because the user created uh, the test script the user can uh, navigate to uh, the local data repository and uh, we have uh, created uh, some smart solution to understand the fields on the screen based on their uh, tab name, their field type, field name and this is the value which uh, we wanted to populate on the screen and if user wants to add a new field on the screen so user can uh, click on the uh, add data row so once I click it so here, uh, here we get an additional row and the user just have to fill in the required data from the screen suppose I wanted to populate uh, one more field uh, with the name say uh, you know uh, completed by so I can just enter this so user can launch the trackwise application and see uh, what exactly field they wanted to populate user can now uh, go over the new PR screen because uh, on the uh, same uh, window signature tab I wanted to add one more field in my data repository to be populated so from the signature tab say, uh, I wanted to add one field completed on this is uh, of type string completed on that's it Right. So here I can just uh, provide the date uh, format in the same format which uh, trackwise accept. So I can click on next, take some date and uh, fill in, in the option. So this way I added uh, one more step to be populated by Opti by just adding one data additional data row in the data repository so user doesn't have to do anything extra right so we can uh, see how easy it is uh, for any user to you know uh, update uh, the test grid. so this is mainly for the PR screen and at the same time we have uh, other uh, business components that can be updated uh, quite easily by just uh, you know providing some uh, uh, dynamic uh, data so uh, just a time check uh, Sumit uh, we are left with uh, five minutes so we can take few questions I'm yes sure uh, thank you so much uh, yeah so uh, we will go ahead and uh, take some time uh, for questions now so uh, just a quick reminder uh, you know please be sure to type your questions into the question box uh, in your control panel uh, though we have already a few, a few questions here so, uh, so let's start uh, you know uh, with the uh, one question uh, but um, how do you handle a negative test uh, where you expect to receive an e error condition? Okay, so uh, there are two cases. Uh, one uh, 
if you expect some uh, you know uh, pop up at us at some specific screen so he has the keywords to handle those uh, expected uh, pop ups or you know error messages but if uh, in case if uh, you are talking about some unexpected uh, error messages or pop ups on the screen so he has a feature of uh, recovery scenario so user can use the recovery scenario to handle those uh, unexpected uh, you know uh, application behavior or the machine behavior for expected one we have the inbuilt uh, keywords so users just have to you know uh, know like which uh, component to call at what place to handle that uh, error message or uh, you know pop up message uh, like of, uh, all right thank you for yeah so uh, here we have uh, another question uh, can we customize the report generated by opki yes uh, so uh, as i mentioned uh, there may be some uh, requirements uh, you know based on uh, uh, different customer they wanted to have a different uh, report format for an instance like uh, one of the customer uh, want to have uh, the report in the same format as we have our uh, manual docs and uh, we created uh, we provided uh, report in the same format so reports can be customized so it depends like in which format uh, you wanted to uh, you know uh, generate the results for sparta we uh, used uh, a generic format which should be acceptable to maximum uh, pharma customers but yeah if a user have some specific requirements uh, to be uh, you know uh, put in in the report so we can get that data all right uh, thank you param so uh, here is uh, one more question uh, can we run the same oqs in multiple track wise instances yes so uh, how uh, you know this uh, overall uh, track wise automation accelerator solution is designed so all this and moment related information is kept at the uh, you know uh, uh, outer layer so user can just change uh, the instance the url credentials at the outer layer uh, without uh, you know getting into the test grid and uh, you know user can manage multiple track wise instances they can execute the same script on multiple uh, track wise instances that includes your maybe you know say sql environment or oracle environment uh, you know different versions of uh, Uh, track wise, eight point seven dot say fourteen, eight point seven dot sixteen until there is a you know specific uh, change on the screen uh, in different uh, track wise instances. But yeah, it's quite easy to manage multiple track wise instances. All right, thank you, Param. Uh, here is one more question: uh, How can we handle a deviation, if any, that may occur during the execution? So the basic idea. Uh, you know uh, we have uh, while doing the automation is uh, to catch the deviation right so uh, suppose uh, you have some expected data which you want uh, in a specific fields or you know a specific uh, value of the field so uh, you can put that uh, uh, value as the expected value and uh, we can use the uh, in build uh, comparison uh, keywords so opki will uh, compare the uh, you know expected value with the actual value on the screen to get you the deviation so if that value is not matching so opki will automatically uh, you know fail that uh, particular keyword so ultimately you will see the overall test case as fail and uh, you can drill down to uh, that failure part uh, to catch you know why exactly this uh, step is failed and as i mentioned uh, from the previous result i showed you so uh opki automatically show you there is a change in uh, you know uh, change in the value which leads to this uh, test case as fail and user will get the deviation from the you know detailed results here let me just quickly show it back again and i hope that answer your question so here we have uh, one comparison uh, a uh, method verify text in table cell so this is my expected value which was uh, uh, pending approval but on screen we got the work in progress uh, message so that means there is a deviation and opti automatically compare this value and uh, we can also see in the screenshot as the evidence 
right? So here we have the status work in progress. So it depends like uh, what is your expected value, what is your actual value. Opki will uh, you know compare both and uh, give you the deviation in the report. Right. I hope uh, that answers the question. So uh, I'll take this last question. Uh, uh, Param, uh, there is, uh, can Opki validate grid field values which populate from web services? Yes, exactly. So uh, as I mentioned initially, Opki can uh, do multi uh, technology uh, validation. So uh, you can uh, take a scenario, suppose uh, you are, you know, uh, using the web services maybe REST services or SOAP APIs and uh, say creating some uh, some records or some, you know, populating some fields. So Opki can hit those APIs, get the endpoint result, the response, parse it, use the parsing uh, output uh, from that API and consider it uh, as your maybe, you know, expected values or consider it for comparison on the UI. At the same time, you can also put the verification at the database level. You can connect to any database and, uh, you know, retrieve some uh, data from there and uh, again do the comparison. At the same time, you can do the comparison at the mobile level within the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, suite. So uh, you can, uh, you know, get the value from the UI. You can uh, connect to any mobile device do the validation. So you, you can do, uh, you know, multi-level uh, validation uh, using Opki as uh, Opki support multiple technologies, including web, desktop applications, mobile applications, APIs. So, you know, uh, it's uh, multi-technology uh, support that we have in Opki. Uh, thank you, Param. Uh, it looks like uh, we have already covered most of the questions. So, uh, uh, however, like I can see, uh, there are more, uh, you know, couple of questions here. Uh, so, uh, what I can, what we can do, you know, we will uh, share the uh, the answer of these questions for this session uh, to the respective participants. So, Param, uh, is there anything else uh, which you wanted to cover uh, before we wrap up this session? So, uh, in this webinar, uh, we looked at the solution uh, trackwise uh, automation uh, accelerator. Uh, we look we see like how we can uh, create the OQs or PQs. Uh, we saw execution of OQs, so we saw the execution uh, reports. So that was all uh, I have to, uh, you know, to cover in today's uh, webinar. So I would like uh, users to uh, provide some kind of feedback or any specific things which they want to cover in our next uh, trackwise uh, automation webinar. We'll be happy to cover uh, those items. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Param, for this great insight. So, uh, well, uh, uh, I would like to say thank you uh, so much to all the participants. Uh, we really appreciate your time and, uh, of course, we will keep, keep you updated about our next session. So, thank you so much once again. Thank you so much, everyone.